We were just sitting here thinking, discussing what we might talk about on today's How Are You Feeling? How Are You Feeling? How Are You Feeling? And we thought we might tackle the minute subject of what's the meaning of it all? What's why, the meaning why of Why do life? we continue? And the differences between somebody like me who doesn't experience depression and somebody like you that does, what would you call me? I don't know, I'd like to know what other people, what do you call someone who doesn't suffer from depression? Are they an antidepressive person? Maybe you're an antidepressive. I'm an antidepressant, I can cheer up. Oh. Oh. I cheer people up for a living. Hmm. Maybe I'm a human form of antidepressant. Yeah. Unless you can't stand me. And then I suppose you'd be more depressed. Could be why you annoy me sometimes. A lot of people that I know that are highly intelligent, like Mark, because I've just got normal intelligence, but highly no, intelligent. Think, well, I have. I've just got. I've just not. Yeah, just... you're far. You always undersell yourself. I think you're one of the most intelligent people. No, I've no, met. no. But uh, I'm, I'm emotionally intelligent. But I don't think I'm very intellect, particularly intellectually intelligent. But in my experience, many people that I've met who have, I would say, an a very high level of intelligence, which you have, you've got a very high IQ, very high degree, all of that stuff, so often seem so unhappy. Mm. And, and Mark and I have this discussion, and I think it's because sometimes we need to stop asking the questions. Mark will question everything to the nth degree, won't you? Like I will, I will go to the point of, like we all do, oh God, I'm exhausted, oh my God, I'm doing, working three jobs, oh my God, you know, the, 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 the harder you work, the more you need to work, you buy more things and you have to pay for more things and then, blah, 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 and the kids and the worry and blah, 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 blah. What will all this mean when I'm dead? What will any of it mean? And I stop myself. I go, don't go there because that is the thing of madness. When you start to really question it, you then have to break down everything that we're doing and then you get depressed. You think, what's the point of anything? Now, you do that. Mm. You keep asking the bloody questions of what's the point of it all. Don't ask, I think. Mm. But then that's saying ignorance is bliss. No, no, because I don't want to be ignorant. But where questions can't be answered, like what is the meaning of life? Yeah. Because, yes, we could say, oh, I want to, I, I'm going to embrace Buddhism and sit in a mountain and be at one with the world and I'm just gonna exude goodness and when I die, my soul will pass through to a good place. And but I can't do that. I live in South London. There isn't a bloody meaning to no, it. No, but the easy answer to that is, is just stop being so bloody self-indulgent and stop asking those questions. But I think where it well, becomes... No, because I don't no, no, sit as self-indulgent. No, no, but where, really I think, where I think it becomes a problem, where I think it's a bit more complicated than just what is the meaning of life, I do think the question, what is the meaning of life, is, is threaded through everything a depressive feels mm. and I think or thinks about and so I think I can give you examples of I get into a pleasant situation and I'm always thinking about the end of it I, I start yeah. something and it's over I look at things mm. and I look at things in terms of how finite they are not how infinite they are well nothing's infinite I, I think about things so that thing of wonder you know the mind-blowing madness of what does it mean to be a human being on this planet and da 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 when it starts to trickle down into everyday things, then it becomes a real pain. That's what it's you a do. Real you're agony. Never, you're it's always, a real agony. It feels like so often, and of course when we were first together it was much worse, because you're much better now, because you've done a lot of bloody work on yourself. But it always felt like, and I couldn't put my finger on it. I mean, first together, it's always like, and I, I put it down to being a director. For ages, I go, oh my God, this is a really irritating thing about being with the director is that there was just one step outside of whatever well, we were doing. Well, there is a bit of that. Watching it. There is a so bit of that. That is a part of it. And maybe that's part of why you are a director, because mm. it's part of your... But you're also... It's hard for you to be in the present mm. because you're always worrying about when's it going to go wrong. But I, I, think, I think, again, this is also where I think depression and addiction creep in because I think that idea of things not lasting forever... And how can you defeat that? And how can you how can you fight that? And how can, what can you do to is is why you in a sense get get off your tits? You get off your tits because you think this might provide me with an escape route from the horror of day to day living, the, or the the, the, few, the the futile pointlessness of it. Now that you know, that's what I, you would say about your. I mean, obviously, you can cut this out if you think that this is too much to share with people. But that's what you would say about your really dark days when you were very um, promiscuous and um, 
substance-driven mm. was that you couldn't bear to be with your thoughts and with yourself no. and with the night and with the loneliness no. and with the darkness. And so that would drive you on and on and on to end up with somebody you didn't know their name, end up in a pub yeah. till it closes. And that that's a perfect example of self-medicating depression, isn't mm, it? Totally. Is yeah. that right? Yeah. And you're, you're running, I mean, they, the, the phrase, the geographicals, you know, you go on the geographicals. Um, the geographicals don't, don't just have to involve getting on a plane and going to the Arctic, which they did. Um, they can also involve being going, just constantly running away from yourself and, and heading into town and going all nights out. And every night was like a dark journey to hell. But it started off as a kind of dark journey towards some kind of salvation. Somewhere in this evening, I will meet someone, invariably a girl, yeah. So, what some, else was well, the girl? <laughs> some, sometimes I'd, I'd sometimes I'd flirt with jugglers and clowns, um, but you know, in fact, an acrobat once. But um, but you would, and so you would end up you seeking. Tell me about that. You would end up seeking company. You would end up seeking anything other than being left to face yourself. I mean, the, my biggest dread in life was going back to my flat on my wow. own. I think drink and drugs are often an escape for people who really struggle with the meaning of life. I mean, I think that's a kind of romantic, it's not meant to be romantic, but I think that is, that is, you know, and it's one of the reasons. And I think if you think too much about the meaning of life, you end up depressed. I would say that I am, I am a half empty person. I would say that I'm a melancholic person. I would say that most things I experience, I experience through the lens of when it's going to end, how it's going to, I mean, the other weird thing in all, in all of this conversation is, I mean, something that has been happening a lot this week, and I think it could have been why we had a, a row earlier in the week is that I've had that terrible feeling of um, sudden incoming cataclysmic grief of some form. Like something awful is, is, is about to interrupt the sort of free movement of life. And it... I know, it's like when I was coming back from Glasgow and you suddenly sent me that text out of the blue. Okay, you know, the, Korean, the North Koreans have sent a missile and it's all going to kick off and the whole world's going to die. Yeah, I didn't say it like that. I said it with well, a you did, big really. smiley emoji. You did really when I had no internet and I couldn't check out all, and I did really did think Armageddon was on its way. You you almost relish it because you think, wow, if the world ends, great, I don't have to be worrying anymore. Well, it almost if the world... a bit, if you're honest. What? A little bit of you was sort of hopeful. That yeah, but I think that I don't, I don't know if that's a defining feature of being a. a but I mean, I I can't. Maybe it's just a defining feature of being Mark. Yeah. But that also, that also stretches to being intolerant of oneself and not being able to be kind about oneself and only seeing oneself in a negative way. One only ever seeing the end of relationships. One only ever seeing, for example, I really struggle at the moment. I don't know if other people suffering from depression have this as a parent. I really struggle with the melancholy I feel around a feeling of losing my children as they become adults, whereas you feel that very, almost the excited. opposite. Yeah, you mm. feel excited. Now that's not to say I'm not excited about them as adults. I've been a dad with a young child since the age of 23. And as Kiki gets older, I'm sort of thinking, oh my God, you know, for 23 years, I've had a child under the age of nine. It's funny, isn't it? Because I'd be around saying, me. I'd be saying, God, ever since 23, which is very young to have a child, I have been 100% responsible for this, this human being. And now I've, they're growing up and they're, you know, wonderful young women and now I can do more of what I want to do in my life knowing that I've got brought up loving, loved children. Yeah. I think, but I think that's, again, that's your character. You just see everything in a negative, blooming way. Hmm. Say, I am Mark and I am a nightmare. Because everything is a negative. No! But when you're dark, you, you, I yeah, mean, if you go there. dark about every single blooming thing. It's like we go on holiday. If I go on holiday, I can't, I'm already thinking about returning. I know. Whereas I go on holiday and I think, oh, I've had such a lovely time. Oh, I'm so glad now to be going back to my life. Do you know what I did the other day? I counted how many Christmases I'll probably have if I live to the average age of a man. <laughs> God. Does anyone want to take and him it, off my hands? And it doesn't amount Just give to me many. some respite for a week. I've, I've. Just I've, take him for a week. I, I use time, the passage of time. I think depression and time is a massive topic. 
the lack of control over time and the but if because the thing is you're always thinking about time mm. so you're never in all of this boils down to the same thing be in the moment yeah but the moment's gone yeah but don't overthink it you stay in the moment. You're trying to stop the world from turning and turn it back the other way left. Or whatever way the world, turn, world turns. You're trying to make it turn the other way. What way does the world turn? It doesn't actually turn. Oh, I don't know. It turns that, that, that way. Well, whatever way it is turning, you're trying to make it turn the other way. No, I'm not. You cannot win it. And you are exhausting yourself with trying to control things that are complete and isn't that just you because you always have to be striving you always have to try and be perfection and you've given yourself what is perfection what do they say in the priory perfection is non-existent and so many addicts want to look but you're for often perfection just, but you're often just because say, you can it's a stick you can beat yourself yeah, but you're often oh my just god say, i couldn't do slow it. down time how many depressed people who suffer from depression here people say just cheer up or no. just don't do it or can't you just not think like that? It's not that. It's not about. It's not willfully saying, "You know what I'm going to do today? I'm really don't no, get but, depressed but, about the meaning of life." No, but to no. sometimes move yourself on. Yeah, from I, the do, I do. I do. I do countless things to try and move myself on. I do exercise. I do. I try and be of service to people. That's why when I enter into a stupid mood, it's me trying to kind of literally run away from the, the nastiness of this fucking illness because it's sitting there on your shoulder like no, a no. like a monkey, and it's just. You know, I just get frustrated for you, and of course, of course, I know that you can't just say, "Just don't do this." But it doesn't stop the partner of whoever it is that is that is experiencing this from going. I wish you bloody could, though. And I tell you something else that I really, really wish you could. Well, I tell you something else that really affected me this week. It's really, really affected me, and it was the death of Tara Palmer Tomkinson. It's really haunted me. Because my paths crossed with hers a couple of times, your paths have crossed mm. with her professionally a couple of times. Lovely. I felt there was, I mean, and I, I'm, you know, a little bit with, like with Amy Winehouse until I saw the documentary. I thought I had my ideas of this woman until I spent a couple of days with her. And she was such an intelligent. She was. Such a sharp, such, so full of life. And then when I saw these... And kind. And kind. Yeah, really she was really kind. You met her, because I remember mm. once when she came on Loose Women years and years and years ago, and she'd just come out of Arizona, and she'd just done rehab, and she was like very, oh, $40,000, you know, it saves your life. She had this mock American accent, and I just, and I was like dreading her coming on. I thought, oh God, what's she going to be like? 20 seconds, and I thought, I like you. We have... I would be friends with you. You yeah. are properly kind. You're funny, and she you're was smart. fun. She was fun, and I remember having the most bizarre. I spent two days in Euro Disney with her. I think you were supposed to be on the trip, and one night, yeah, I was supposed to one be. night, That's before we were together. one night, we ended up in the Disney hotel. Hayden playing piano, Tara Palmer Tomkinson singing. When she, there was one quote where she said, "I just want my family to be proud of me." I just, mm. and I just thought everything about it just went to, and it just, I just thought about the the pain and the agony and the layers of self-loathing and chasing away from yourself and running away from yourself and I literally but there for the, but for the grace of God sat there and I just thought oh my god you know mm. if I was to pick up a drink pick up a drug that would happen mm. within relative to life and within I thought minutes. of that when the story came out I thought I bet Mark oh. looking at this and going oh my god and it was like an AA meeting for you almost like that's what will happen if yeah. you pick up again that's yeah. what will happen I mean we don't know what the facts are we don't know whether no. she was drinking with you I mean I think a family have said that it was you know I think it's come out that she, she died of natural causes but we don't know but when, uh, when I can, you, I can how guarantee, it took you to that I place. can guarantee that when you've been through the torment that she's been through, mm. when you've gone through the the strength of the addiction that mm. she experienced, the, the, even even at her, even at her most peaceful peaceful times, she will have been in torment. You don't live a life like that, and and mm. the cause of a life like that, and the, and, the, and oh God. anyway, I mean for me, and that has been it's almost been like a sort of. Thing that's just hung over me this week because I just mm. I spend most days thinking that could have been me that that was the path I was heading down that was the route I was heading down um, that's the route I could still head down if I pick up a drink and yet you're faced without any of those substances with the world as black and as bleak as it feels I've, had, I've gone through my most self-loathing week 
I've gone through hating myself so much, finding myself so undesirable. I've alienated you. I've I pushed you away. I've I've and I've just felt like a festering, tarry, dark creature. And I've just gone into that room and I've just fortunately I wrote loads, but that's how I felt. Yeah. Foul. Like Gollum, I feel like I feel like. But a it's creature. really strange, and I, I, you know, to people that are partners of, you know, when you've if you've got somebody like that, what happens is when Mark goes to that place, he literally tries to make himself as hideous as he can. I mean, he's still gorgeous, Mark. He's still that to me, but to him, because he's manifested this thing in him that is so horrible, and it's like he wants to push me, and then and then of course I'll be like walking around him like this because he's so on edge and so dark and so I did everything and I then and then he gets what he thinks he is because I'm like whoop I'm gonna swerve Mark whoop mm. just going upstairs whoop just going out because I don't want to be around it because you don't know what it is and then that of course exacerbates the whole problem and he goes oh my god you don't want to be near me I'm disgusting I'm repulsive that's the awful cycle. circle cycle that this this the what is it the black dog mm. does I just feel like what on earth happens to the spirit of someone so full of life Torture. and I feel like I'm so full of life and yet it feels like one can't I don't know can't get in touch with that part of yourself and can't be kind to that part of yourself and can't accept that part of yourself I literally feel like I would, I would like most of the time this week to have bandaged myself in black gaffer tape Anyway, on that cheery note, I don't know why I was talking about Tara Palmer talks. It really, no, really it's affected haunting, me. It's haunting, isn't it? She, I there think everyone some... that met Tara Palmer Tomkinson would be feeling a bit of that because she was she was a good person. She was, she was a good she person was. with the disease of addiction, yeah, she really and was. she wasn't a bad person, and she wasn't a pumpy, pumpy socialite. You know, puffball. No. She had she had grit, and she had. Mm intelligence and, and, and a good heart. Mm. Very sad.